Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. No matter how divided this community is in some aspects, I think we can all agree on one thing. We all love money. Oh, my f***ing However, sometimes we don't want to put too much effort into it, and after having so many money-making videos on this channel, there is one particular topic we haven't talked about until now, and that is alt accounts. In today's video, I will go over what they are, and then show you my top 15 accounts to make extra money while you focus on your main, or even just AFK while working or chilling. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe when notifications on, and consider becoming a channel member for tons of perks including instant access to our Discord. Now, my biggest disclaimer for this video is that for all the footage you see here, especially methods involving monsters, I will be wearing my gear and then tell you what items to use if you don't have a particular object in my setup. So, in short, ALT stands for Alternate Account, which is simply playing on another account typically when you're playing your main for example. People normally do this for extra cash because, under the correct circumstances, you can make enough money for your bi-weekly bond and even more thanks to some great methods we will see in this video. I will show them to you in three categories. Skilling, PVMing, and a much sweatier one in the end. In each category, methods will go up according to requirements, and I will show you GP and XP per hour with each one. That being said, let's begin. The very first account can be set up in just about 10 minutes. By doing the Druidic Ritual quest and by going to the GE to get some supplies, you will be making money with the Herbler skill faster than you realize. You can clean Guam leaves at level 3 going up all the way to Torstal at level 75. Thanks to an update in 2020, we can automatically clean all your herbs now, so all you need is a single click to clean your full inventory in just a few seconds. The catch is that this is pretty slow for both XP and GP at the beginning. If you decide to start with Guams, you will get around 6k experience and a staggering 22k GP per hour. When you are able to clean the highest herb possible, which is Torstal, both of these numbers will jump to 37 and 330k respectively. The great thing about it, which I've mentioned in other videos, is that this will always be profitable since clean herbs are more expensive than grimy ones because they need to be cleaned and people normally do not want to do this. You can also make a crafting alt that simply focuses on turning gold bars into bracelets. All you need is level 7 crafting and a bracelet mold in your inventory. For some odd reason I've never really questioned, gold bracelets are a lot more expensive than bars, so this will always be profitable. If I had to guess, it would be a combination of gold bars being super cheap because of the blast furnace, and maybe the alk value of gold bracelets giving them decent margins. Regardless, by doing this AFK you can reach upwards of 25k XP per hour, which we don't exactly need, but GP per hour will top around 140k, which for level 7 crafting is absolutely insane. If you want to sacrifice just a little bit of AFK, you can make gold bracelets with gems, but you will essentially have to do double the work and will give more experience and profit per hour. One of the most iconic AFK activities in the game is of course making cannonballs, and this is because they are by far one of the slowest things you can do in the entire game. I mean, a full inventory of steel bars with the normal mold can be done in like 3 minutes. Other than the Nightmare Zone, I can't really think of many things that allow you to AFK for that long before having to click on your screen to resupply. You can get to 13k XP and around 100k GP per hour by doing this in Edgeville or Prifinus. And a great quality of life we got a few months ago was the addition of the Giant's Foundry. There's an item called the Double Cannon Mold, which, as the name suggests, will pretty much double your XP and the GP per hour, again at the cost of some AFK time. It doesn't take too long to get it, but I would say it's absolutely mandatory for Ironman. For the next one, I recommend level 40 fletching because we will be turning logs into unstrung bows. The reason why we need level 40 is because that's where it starts to be profitable, and you will only focus on long bows since some short bows will actually put you in the red numbers. We will do this for Willow, Maple, Yu, and finally Magic Logs for as long as you can AFK. At level 40, you will be getting about a 62k experience and a 46k GP per hour which isn't really that bad considering level 40 doesn't take that long. This can be maximized at level 85, when you can cut magic logs into magic longbows, which will bump the numbers up to 137k experience and 150k GP per hour. You normally cut logs a bit faster than cannonballs for example, but all you need to do is literally bank stand and wait. Of course, we can't make a video about making money without the best skill in the game. As you probably know, Zaya runecrafting is not the most AFK friendly method, but this is definitely the best way to chill while making tons of cash and training runecrafting. 
All you need is level 77 and 100% Arceus favor, and it's also heavily recommended to bring Blood Essence for more profits, and of course the runecrafting outfit if you are a Giga Chad. This requires slightly more attention because of how often the Essence rocks deplete, but even then you don't need to be laser focused. You can get between 30 and 38k experience per hour, and a minimum GP per hour will be around 300k without taking any of the extra benefits into account, like the Elite Current Diary, the Blood Essence, and of course the Runecrafting Outfit. Even with Blood Runes being at their cheapest they have ever been, this method is still great for passive GP. For one of the absolute slowest and low attention methods in the game, we need level 82 fishing to catch anglerfish. I would recommend slightly higher level to avoid being miserable, but they are slow enough so you may not even notice it. By going to Piscarellius with a fishing rod and sandworms, you can come here to bank north and when your inventory is full. I also recommend spirit flakes from Temporos, which will give you a chance of catching two fish instead of one, at the cost of one scale each time you get it. This will be anywhere between 10 and 15k experience, and at least 150k GP per hour. So those spirit flakes are heavily recommended after you have done a little bit of Temporos. Without them, you're looking at more AFK because of how long it will take to fill up your inventory, which is exactly what we're looking for. An absolutely ridiculous method is available to us after Lunar Diplomacy and level 86 magic. You will grab Astral, Nature, and Earth Runes, some cash, and as many mahogany logs as you can buy. The spell Plank Make will turn logs into planks for a fee, but always stick to mahogany planks for the biggest payout. We've covered this in the 1 to 99 magic guide, and even though you can do it manually for more experience and GP per hour, clicking the spell once will get to work on the entire inventory. This is probably the second best method for experience, and the number one for money, because even while AFK you can get upwards of 135k experience and a whopping 500k GP per hour. The requirements for this one are pretty heavy compared to what we have seen so far, but this is probably what's gonna get you some sweet bond money the fastest for the lowest effort possible. Something that's even less effort at the cost of less experience and the GP per hour is mining Amethyst at the Mining Guild. And be warned, this is probably the hardest requirement for the skilling alt accounts at an astonishing level 92 mining. If you decide to come here at this level, it will be even slower, which gives us even more time to AFK. By mining Amethyst, you can get anywhere between 15 to 20k experience per hour, and I recommend the Prospector outfit because every point of experience counts when you're doing something this slow. Amethyst still holds pretty decent value, and you can even walk away from anywhere between 250 to 300k GP in that same time. And in order to have a less crowded spot, the Elite Falador Diary is needed, after which you will talk to the Supervisor for permission to enter. The reason why I have over 120 million cooking experience is because of the following method, and it is of course cooking sharks or anglerfish. I personally do anglers thanks to the Cooking Cape perk, but even by burning a few pieces of food per inventory, you will walk away with a tons of cash. I recommend doing this at the Host City's Kitchen for less burned food, or at the Myths Guild for the best cooking range in the game. If you don't have 99 cooking yet, which god forbid you have an untrimmed cooking cape, don't forget your cooking gauntlets for even higher success rate when cooking food. And of course, you can cook anything below sharks and anglers, but these are going to be the best to pay out for the skill. You can expect between 250 to 330k experience and 230 to 300k GP per hour, and this literally requires 4 clicks per cycle. Alright scapers, time for something riskier. We will start the combat alt account with an easy one, and it is going to be a skeletal wyverns account. Requiring level 72 slayer and either an elemental shield or a dragon fire ward, skeletal wyverns are not that dangerous when fighting them from a distance. If you don't have a Dragon Hunter crossbow, use a Dragon Crossbow, since the Armadillo one is not that big of an upgrade. Also, don't forget about Blessed the Hide for that cheap prayer bonus. Even though Skeletal Bones are pretty decent GP, I would personally bring a Bone Crusher to avoid cluttering up the inventory, and of course, stay here for as long as possible. If you bring High Alchemy Runes, your trips can be pretty much indefinite, since they drop both prayer potions and lobsters, giving you even more supplies to make extra profit per trip. Once you lose aggro, simply walk away, and come back for even less clicks per cycle. If you gain a few extra Slayer levels, you are now able to kill Gargoyles. However, we will be doing this a little differently. Instead of your best in slot melee gear to beat them quickly, we will take Fault Gothen's armor, which is going to make it so you can stay here until you please. 
With a crazy high defense bonus Barrow's armor provides, along with a healing passive effect of the Gotham set, any damage gargoyles do to you will be non-existent, and you will be at full HP pretty much at all times. Don't forget your prayer potions for piety if you want more kills per hour, and of course your rock hammer along with high elk runes since they drop a wide assortment of valuable items. For the amount of effort you put into this, the payout is surprisingly high at around 50k GB per hour. 75 Slayer for an alt account is not super easy to achieve, but once you get it, the alt account will be printing money like a degenerate. One of my favorite ways to make money while playing on the hardcore is going to the Catacombs of Corenda to kill brutal black dragons. I'm wearing my Dragon Hunter crossbow here because it's more accessible and it actually hits surprisingly high. This also lowers the amount of people that will complain in the comments about me doing this with a twisted bow. Okay, jokes aside, for this you need 77 Slayer, Dragon Fire Protection, and one or two prayer potions along with one or two pieces of emergency food in case they melee you. You will be clicking more often because your inventory will fill a lot faster because of their drops, but you will walk away with upwards of 1 mil GP per hour if you have at least the DHCB and Rigor. Resupply the bank, and then come back with the Inferno Teleport on the Jerix Talisman. The requirements for the following two are pretty steep, first being the Vire Watch Sentinels. In order to kill them, you need completion of Sins of the Father, and being a Grand Master quest, this will take you a few weeks to have your alt account ready. With your Blister Wood Flail and as many prayer enhancing items as you have, come to the spot with Auto Retaliate on, and just wait for items you can high -alk. Once you are low on prayer, there's an altar a few tiles away, or, if you bring your Envire Noble outfit, there's a bank right in front of the altar where you can actually resupply. What we're looking for is of course the Blood Shard, and at a whopping 5 million GP as of the time of making this video, getting about 2 of these per week will guarantee your bond and any extra money you can just go to your main. This drop is 1 in 1.5k, so you can actually go a bit dry, but even without it we are looking at anywhere between 150 to 200k GP per hour from their normal drops. The last combat alt account for now is a Rune Dragon alt. And just like before, requirements for this one are actually pretty demanding. First of all, you need Dragon Slayer 2, and I would personally say it's going to take even longer than Sins of the Father. Now, when you actually make it there, the recommended setup for this is pretty much the most expensive we have seen, and for this one, there are actually no substitutes. You need full justice here, a Dragon Hunter Lance, and a Dragon Fire Shield. The only thing you could swap is a Torture instead of the Blood Fury, but I would bring it here to stay longer. Unlike Sentinels, normal drops from uh, Rune Dragons will be upwards of 1.2 mil GB per hour, and thanks to the setup, they won't damage you too much which means you can kill even more per hour, thanks to less runs for banking and resupplies. Now, the last method is its own category because it's actually not something you can do without paying much attention, and will instead need your full focus. The upside is that it can net even bigger rewards, so for it, I will have an expert do the talking. So, here's PlayPro5 to explain how to take the concept of alt accounts to the absolute limit. Hi, I am PlayPro5, and I am what you call a mass motion logger. I have five alt accounts I use to progress my account to help me much faster than most people. Due to the fact there's multiple accounts in the room, it's actually pretty chill. I just click six times and the boss is dead. And what I do is I just use dragon crossbows and blessed dehyde. I love armor dope because it's a cheap budget setup for much logging and it's a great start. Back in the day, armor dope chest please used to be like 40 mil, so I used to be making 17 mil an hour doing a three set three method which is three accounts per world two worlds at once but nowadays three set three method is around 10 mil an hour and doloing for 25 kills an hour is around four to five mil an hour the advantage is that i save a ton of hours that's pretty great but the disadvantage is becomes is when i actually got to put in the requirements and the stats to get them all ready set up but the bright side is that I could do it at the same time doing AFK methods, so it's really not as daunting as people might seem to be. Especially that I've done my Inferno capes on all six of my accounts, and now I'm working on Thralls. Where you can find me is that I actually have a Twitter, a YouTube, and a Twitch. I show my progression on, on Twitch, and I make YouTube videos. I'm right now I'm working on a maxing series and also I'm gonna make featuring I'm gonna make videos on multi-logging on how to ult, stuff like that in my future. Thank you very much for that play pro. 
As it's obvious, this isn't something the average player will be doing for money, but it just goes to show its potential if you are willing to play like an absolute giga chat for the biggest payout possible. Boys and girls of all ages, that's pretty much it for this video, thank you so much for watching and for making it this far. And speaking of money, let's do another giveaway on this video. Leave a comment with your favorite alt account, and in it include the word BEAN, and you will be entered in a giveaway for a bond this next Friday, where I will be drawing the winner live on stream. I want to give a huge shout out to all my channel members, you boys and girls have no idea how much your support means to me, and I hope to keep providing entertaining videos for you all. If you would like to support this channel further, you can click the join button below, and see all the cool perks you can get for a monetary subscription in the videos, in the channel, and of course in the Discord. In the next one, we will go over one of the least popular skills, and I will show you how to achieve level 99 fishing in the most enjoyable, profitable, or AFK way possible. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba 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 ba, a peace.